Well, it's 11.10, and that's been good. And it's been really good. And um, I'm going to, what I want to do this morning, I'm going to maybe try to keep it shorter and sweeter because really for me, it's, uh, I want to, I could have taught it a lot longer. So um, I want to do just a moment of review uh, over this last month because it's been very intentional um, as what the Lord has been leading in, in me in. Uh, and therefore, like the Bible tells us, that he will give you shepherds after his own heart to lead you and feed you with wisdom and understanding. And so I want to just uh, go, go back over this last, um, our, our last times together. Starting this year, we talked about unfamiliar, being unfamiliar, that 2023 would be unfamiliar. Does that mean like, oh, it's mysterious? No, it just means that this year is to be uh, not a season of self-assess, but follow direction. Right? That's what this 2020, not just self-assess, but follow direction. Lord, what do you say? If, it, if you, How many of you know, if, if you come into a town and you say, um, hey, I, I needed to get directions to such and such a place, and for whatever reason, your phone isn't Googling it and the maps isn't right, then you stop at the gas station like we used to have to do, and you say, hey, do you know about this place? They say, yeah. You just go down here, uh, w- one mile, you take a right, if a lady's given to you, at the McDonald's, okay? Um, <laughs> Or you head east, if you've got a guy, go east, and then you go a mile, and then you go north, all right? Um, and, and you have no problem whatsoever, you have absolutely no problem going into a place and having that person tell you, you go up here, you take a right at the McDonald's, you go about two miles, and then you're going to hang a left, and then you're going to hang your first right. Oh, okay. And you have no, you don't even question that because you gave them that seat of authority in your life. And that's the way even the, the, the word to be living our lives is, is in a place of where we give God the right to lead our lives. That's really what lordship is. Lord, I give you the right to lead. But not only do I give you the right to lead, um, I, I look to you to lead. You know, sometimes um, we have to be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves the question, um, who's leading? Who's leading? I gave you the right, but I somehow took it back. You know what I'm talking about? I, I have a tendency to do this as something... But to me, I, one of my greatest weaknesses that I work on um, continually, and, it, I have to, and it's like I say, hey, so what do you think, Ben? And then he, Ben starts talking, and then I'm like, yeah, that's what I think, and da 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 and I just help finish it for him. Right, with my kids. So I, I, I'm, I wanted to let you talk, but then somehow I talk, right? So I hate that, but, but I'm telling you, sometimes we have to, and my wife sometimes will she'll grab my leg, you know, like we'll be sitting at the counter or at the table, and I'll be, you know, Wanting to let them talk, and, or I'm trying, and I and and I, then I start interrupting, and she grabs my leg, and I'm like, "Yes, thank you, Lord." <laughs> um, but anyway, so unfamiliar 2023, we and we kicked off the year on the first uh, first Jan, uh, of January, um, in Sunday, and we talked about first getting things back first. Um, you you may not see this this way, but I also did the first three Wednesdays in January, and really kept in the same way. All of this really filters together in my mind and in my heart. I know some of you all weren't here. Uh, I tried to keep the high places um, a little bit on Sundays, but those other pieces were the fill-ins um, that maybe you would need. But we talked about being simplify and just doing in the name of Jesus. You know, there's, there's strength that way, the name, uh, dialing it in, talking what we talked about, and you maybe have those bookmarks, soap, dial, like dial soap, right? Uh, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Uh, just a simple way for you to open up the word. And remember, we had that, that our Bible memory verse, Psalms 119, verse 18, open my eyes that I might see wondrous things from your law. And maybe that would be a great, great confession as you open the word because the Holy Spirit's alive and the Holy Spirit's there to teach you and to show you wondrous things from his word. Right, Mo? From his word, from law, from the law. All right. Uh, rest, uh, rest for the rest. And we talked about just, uh, just the cares. You know, as you start this, start this word, this world, or not this world, but this year. And then Marty came and he talked to us about having some hope for this year, didn't he? Talked to us about having some hope. And I just, it's so cool to me to see how even the, those words, it's, it, it was so God, right in, 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 intermixed. Um, and it's not like you're like, hey, what do you want me to teach on? I'm like, hey, I want you to hear from the Lord. I want you to teach what, you know, what you're, what you're getting, right? And then we talked about this. And if I could make you listen to a message, um, I would make you listen to this Wednesday night message, Mirror, Mirror, um, it, just talking about, the, talking about love, 
um, we'll maybe just barely scratch that a little bit this morning, but mirror, mirror, um, and how we really need to look into the Word of God to see where we're at. Uh, not other people. We like to have other people to tell us where we're at. We like to look at other people and think we're doing pretty good compared to them. You know, like, like I'm not overweight compared to them. I'm not this compared to them. I'm not, but that's like the worst comparison. Use the mirror, right? Um, and so obedience and sacrifice, uh, not or. Sometimes we're like obedience and sacrifice. Uh, God rather, would rather have obedience, but he also loves that sacrifice where you and I give. So we talked about that a, a Sunday prior. And then um, a sun, a staying sharp, staying sharp. Last week or the week before, we talked about staying sharp. You remember, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And so we were talking about that, about how the wounds from a friend, they can be uh, a precious thing. Um, and so maybe asking that tough question, like, you know, and, uh, and then it's so interesting. Um, the very next uh, Sunday, which was last Sunday, John, Grunwald, he talked about asking some questions. <laughs> I was like, that's good, asking some questions. And, you know, he, there was two things that he talked about why we're to learn to ask questions was evangelism and discipleship. This is where, we're, where we've been at, really, uh, to me, getting back into that to know him and make him known mentality that we are here for a purpose. Why we're gathered together is to, to meet with him uh, to be changed, and yet, so where we, we, when we go out, we would make an appeal for and through with Christ to others. The Bible tells us in Second Corinthians five tells us that it is, God has given to every person here, every person, the ministry of reconciliation. Every believer, where, the, where where we would reconcile people back to God, it would be as if God is making His appeal, appeal through us. You know, I think about the courtroom when you ever see somebody make an appeal. They're, you know, in this world, there's a lot of crazy things, but you know, you and I have the ability to make an appeal or to challenge their ruling. That's what it means to make an appeal. You would appeal the ruling. You would challenge their ruling. You would show them different evidence. As it would say, he said, as it were, Christ making his appeal through you. So you would be Christ here on this earth, that they would see you, Christ, and the anointing here on this earth. The anointing, the, the goodness of God in you, on you, here on this earth, and that their ruling would be different. How many of you love that first song this morning? How, holy, holy, holy. Well, I, 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 I sometimes get, I, I, maybe I won't say trip out, but I love going on tangents, right? And I'll just be like, and put this like, and, and maybe that's, uh, I don't know what they call that, but um, I don't know. But I, I, I can remember a lot of little details and go, and it just pinballs all over in my mind. And I love the idea of, of the fact that you and I, uh, that's a response. The, and this is the angel's response in heaven, in Revelation, where it's, they're around the throne and they're saying, holy, holy, holy. Holy means set apart, or one of the words, one of the definitions of it would be uh, none like you, set apart, different, holy, set apart. So they're saying, their angels are around the throne saying, and you and me, this is our response because we're seeing, wow, there is none like you, there's none like you. And they're saying there's none like you, and they're saying it in his glory, which his glory, when the Bible you see in Moses, he, he said, Lord, show me your glory. He made his goodness pass by, right? So we, we, we see these angels uh, that are in, in all of heaven saying, Holy, 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 holy. There's none like you. There's none like you. And what they're seeing is his goodness, his goodness, his goodness toward man, his goodness toward angels. Even with Lucifer, when his goodness, his, the light was shining from him, causing great, great music to be played through him. Wow, just everything that, wow, there's none like you. Just goodness is coming out from you. Goodness is coming out from you. Goodness is coming out from you. We're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Even maybe you've said this, glory to God, honor, glory, reverence, glory to God. We give you high, and you know what? His glory, he's saying, I give you, I give you, I give you. Wow. That's who God is. And that's how we're, he's, he wants to make an appeal through us to others. Now, I want to go ahead and jump, jump real quick here. This was in our, this week's Bible reading. The end. Matthew chapter 28, 19 through 20. Go and make disciples. But I want to read it. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He said, go make disciples. So how many of you know that you and I, we have a mission? And disciple, discipleship, it, 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 if you, maybe you've seen this word discipline in that right there. Isn't it, it, it's pretty amazing how discipline and discipleship really are so close. If you're not reading it uh, maybe really intently, you could almost mistake those. Discipline or disciple, they're, they're pretty close. Um, and that's really, there, there is something about keeping before us. And this is what he's talking about. Go and keep before them all things that I have commanded. Keep them before, keep them before you, keep them before you. Kind of reminds me of, of, of Joshua, doesn't it? Joshua chapter 1. Meditate on these words day and night that you would have good success. How many of you believe that God would love for you to walk in, uh, in success? Absolutely. He never led you by success. He never manipulated or enticed you and said, come, follow me, and I'll make your business really successful catching lots of fish. No, he said, lay that down, follow me. He never told the rich young ruler, if you come follow me, you, I'll make you have a lot more, right? He is a rewarder, right? But, that's, but, but the thing about it is a, a reward. If you earned it, it can't be a reward. You know? So he's a rewarder. Uh, of those that diligently seek the reward, you know? No, wait, wait. I'm a rewarder of those who diligently seek me, seek him. So seeking him brings about a reward. You're saying you, don't, you shouldn't seek the reward. I'm saying you should not try to seek the reward because that's not, then you're not seeking him. Misplaced affection is important. Remember, God looks at the heart. And in this world, we're, we're so enticed by reward, aren't we? I mean, lab rats, lab rats, you know, they, they, are, they're, they're, they, they put rats in this cage and they, and they see if they'll do something again and again because if they can get them to associate an action with reward, they'll do it over and over again. Did you know that that's how even just, well, it's funny, we were watching this, this, this uh, documentary, even Silicon Valley, if you get a reward, <laughs> you're going to do it again, again and again and again. Uh, motive's important. Anyway, we're not to be working for, re for reward uh, at all. Anyway, go make disciples. So um, let's, let's jump here. I want to just talk for a moment about the most overused, um, underdefined, maybe uh, continuously altered word in our English dictionary. Just love. Overused, underdefined, continuously altered word. Love. And there, maybe you've heard there's all these different loves in the Bible and these different places that are used. We'll just hit on a, a there's two, two, two places in the New Testament, two different words for love. You'll find phileo or in even Philadelphia. That's where we get the term Philadelphia, uh, the city of brotherly love. And so there's this love, brotherly love or affection uh, in Phileo. Uh, Eros is a different one that you see in Song of Solomon. Um, that's like Valentine's Day, typically. Um, you know, Cupid, right? Uh, but then there's this one, Agape. And you'll find that Agape is a noun, um, which is the God kind of love. You've heard it taught and described as the God kind of love. Um, but when you say the definition of love is agape, or, or of Agape, which we call love, is the God kind of love, we still didn't define love, did we? And we hear love all the time about like, oh, you know, what love is, what love is. And we say, we will go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and love is patient, love is kind, love is these things. But that, that's the outworking of love, right? That's what, but what, what, what is love? What is love? And so if you were to look up the word agape, um, you will find it, what it really means in the Greek is uh, preference, Preference, but not just preference, because love is, it, let me give you this, and I'm gonna, I, I wish I could uh, just put a, um, a screen of the Strong's Concordance up there for you, but then you might get, like, reading something out, you know, okay. Um, but this is right out of the Stro uh, Strong's Concordance. It means this, <clears throat> actively doing, this is the action of love, because love means what the Lord prefers, or agape, moral preference, or what God prefers. That's what love, the definition of love is what God prefers. What God prefers. So the act, that's agape. Agapeo is the verb of love. Agape is the noun, the person, place, or thing. So if you and I are to walk in love, 
there's an action. We are now in, we are, we are um, at, love activated is agapeo, which means this, actively doing what the Lord prefers with him. Actively doing what the Lord prefers with him. It's interesting, by his power and direction is in parentheses in, in, that, in, that, in this definition. Love, agapeo, love is always defined by God. For God, it's as if this, Christ living his life through the believer. Preferring, let's say it's the most simple way, simple way, to walk in love is to prefer what God prefers. So let me go back to the, maybe one of these scriptures that you might see on uh, two, 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 two laws that are, you see are given in the New Testament that all of these fulfill the, you know, all of the Old Testament law and the prophets, all of them hang on these two directions, two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love others, right? This is found in Matthew. And love others. Uh, if you go all the way to 39, that's where you see the first and great commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart. The second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Both of those are that word agape. This is why Greek and English, they struggle because there's different words there. And we're trying to communicate something. But we love pizza, Right? Um, we, we, we love a lot of things, but it's not the right love. Um, we love God, but we might not be referring to this love. I don't prefer what God prefers. <laughs> and I'm not going to prefer what God prefers towards you. So sometimes it's good for us to ask ourselves that question, do you love the Lord? With the understanding of what love is, and love is not just this good feeling that I feel good the fact that he loved me, so... Um, what, when it says that God loved me, here's what he says. God so loved the world that he preferred you over his son. In other words, preference is a choice. So love is a choice. It's not a feeling. So breaking it back, breaking it down. So like this is where, this is what, for you and me to walk in the light as he's in the light. I have to tell you, it's, part of it starts with just understanding love. Because he is love. Like what, what, is, what is love? It's preference. Moral preference. And uh, anything good, there's none good but God. So if you and I want to do something that's good, it's going to be coming under God's authority. So who do you love? Who do you love? And he tells us not to love the world, doesn't he? In other words, he said, this is in 1 John chapter 2, but he says, if you love the world, if you prefer the things of the world, then the love of God is not in you. Like, I can't, I can't prefer... I can't make a choice and have a preference to love the world and prefer what the world prefers and at the same time prefer what God prefers. He actually says this in 1 John chapter 2. He says, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It's pretty strong words, isn't it? Aren't you thankful for strong words? Because strong words are kind of like, um, if you ever do some building uh, a, build, a building project, uh, you, you, you'll, maybe, maybe you're not a builder, and maybe you're not a construction guy or a, a construction gal. In other words, you don't value real tools. You might go get your tools at A to Z, um, where like you're, you're, you're trying to crimp some wires with a pair of pliers, and you're really putting it down, and all of a sudden the pliers break, right? And it hurts your hands really bad when, they, when the pliers break, when you're supposed to be crushing something because the metal is from those players is made out of pot metal, that's a frustrating thing. Or if you have a square that's kind of flexy and you're trying to, trying to, T-square, let's go sheetrock here. You're trying to make a straight line, but that thing is kind of flexing, so your line's kind of like this. That's frustrating. Isn't that frustrating when your guide and your tools or your tape measure you, you know, your tape measure, it, it's like, it, it doesn't work right. You know, it, it's like, well, this is, this is, they're not the same as the other ones. This one said made in where, right? <laughs> it is important to have a strong guide. It is important to have a consistent guide, one that never changes in this world when you don't even know what is true. Uh, on here, the, anybody can say anything they want, and you don't really know what's going on. Like, why are there spy balloons? I don't know. Why do they want you to know that there's spy balloons? It's working. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, come on. Get real. Think. All right. 
Crazy. Craziness. All cra- can't believe 99.9%, per- but you can't believe this. This hasn't changed ever. And it's sometimes hard because we like things that maybe are a little soft and squishy, you know, like extra pillows on the bed. And... But if you, if you prefer what the world prefers, the love of the Father is not in you. That's, that's a strong one. Just like if you read some of the Gospels, when Jesus is revealing the Father, and he's revealing not just the Father, but kingdom law, there's some things that go, ooh. And when you kind of get that, ooh, yeah, you're, uh, you, in other words, have to take note and check my guide, you know, then all of a sudden you go, ooh, yeah, I was a little off there. I'm going to, thank you for loving me, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Just thank you for loving me. And here's the coolest thing is if your heart convicts you, um, the, well, first of all, the, we know that the Holy Spirit is the one that is the convictor. He is the one that convicts or, or proves to the world their need for a Savior. Convicts the world of sin. Oh, I want to do a series on this, which is back to, like, back to the beginning. And because in, in this day and age, we don't really know about electricity. Benjamin Franklin and the kite in the key. How many of you have seen this in school? Like, oh, the, he was flying a kite, and the lightning hit the kite, and all of a sudden electric... You know, Come on, raise your hand, help me out. You're going to be here a lot longer. (laughs) But we don't know how to get electricity. We know that we can just plug it into a wall and our phone works and we can Google something to find out what we need to know, but we don't know the basics of even how to put the outlet in the wall or how to hook the, like we don't know the basics in, in, in Christianity. We've heard about the love of God, the grace of God, but do we really know why, back to the beginning, why it's so important that we have a Savior? And so as much as like sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to hear about uh, being sin conscious. If you don't have sin consciousness, then you will have no conscience. <laughs> you got to have a beginning of understanding that I had a need. That, that, that there really is a mark and it's set by God. Like I have to have that basic understanding back to the beginning so that I can move ahead and, and I value, I actually value what, what has been given to me. So we're not going to take time to do that this morning. But So agape, what, agape, oh, agape, preferring what the Lord prefers or actively uh, actively preferring what the Lord prefers. So um, let's, let's jump here. This is what I wanted to get to. How many of you ever, this is uh, the title of this, today's message is this, um, schedule me a wake-up call. Schedule me a wake-up call. How many of you have ever been into a hotel in a different city for an important reason? Maybe some young people, you haven't done that yet. Mom and dad took you with them. But at some point in, in, in our lives, we'll probably have to go for, uh, on a trip to a, des- to a different place for a purpose that's important. We, we were willing to spend the dollars, and even if it was inconvenient, all of these kind of things. And how many of you know, a lot of times when you get into that hotel room, uh, you'll see that there's an alarm clock, right? And you could try to figure out how to make that thing work, and hopefully the volume's up. Hopefully it's not set on radio. Hopefully, right? Have you ever have set an alarm and it didn't go off? Wow, that's frustrating, isn't it? When you set the alarm, you have good intentions, but it doesn't go off. I think sometimes even where we're at right now, we have voices here, like we were talking about the week before about staying sharp. They're, they're, they see the alarm is doing this. They can see it, like it's set, but the volume's just not up. And you're missing some really important things, and you put those people in your life to help you, to guide you. You've even surrounded yourself by righteous people, but yet when you're missing it and when you set the alarm because you wanted to make sure you made it, it's going like off like this. It's not working. It's not working. You ever have that? That's frustrating, isn't it? So what I found is what happens uh, when we go to a hotel, if it's really important that I'm up by, I'll try to set, uh, now we have phones, right? We don't really have to cross this line so much anymore. 
But I, I can tell you, even with, with my phone before, I've set my phone in, in a hotel, and I called down to the front desk and said, hey, can I, can I get a wake-up call? Can I schedule a wake-up call? And you always do that before you go to bed, isn't it? Like you do it before, but first, but first, let's schedule a wake-up call. So how many of you know that you, it's so cool, like how the Lord did this, but uh, you know you're not here by accident? Did you know that this is not like the final destination? But you're here for a purpose? And it's important that you don't miss your meeting. It's important that you don't miss your appointment. So in order to do that, we should probably schedule a wake-up call. We want our alarms to work. That, even with this, how many of you have ever set like scheduled alarms and for whatever reason it snoozed, but it was going off and you saw that it went off but it didn't go off in my ear, right? And But you know what? Even though we set these alarms, and I was going to do this this morning, but, it, but because of just time, I was going to have my alarm set, and uh, it was gonna, I was going to just make sure and, you know, hit that button on the side so I didn't have to pay attention to it. You know what they call that? Oh, what is that called? Snooze. And I think it's interesting how it's nine minutes, not ten minutes. Right? Because if it was 10 minutes, we lost 10 minutes. But because it's nine minutes, you're like, mm, it's okay, snooze. And nine turns into, come on, okay? And 18 turns into, so if I hit it three times, I'm still less than a half of an hour, right? So I got, I got, ah, this is what we say. This is what we say. I got, I got time. I got time. You do? No. Time is slipping through your fingers, through your pillow, through. You don't got time. You don't got time when you're hitting the snooze. You don't have time when the alarm is going off, but you're paying no attention. When alarms are going off in our life, when somebody says, hey, I haven't seen you in a bit. Hey, Hey, how's this going? Hey, I noticed this. Like, or hey, 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 what about this with your kids? Or hey, what about this? You know, like I, I've just noticed. Like, it seems like, man, I just wanted to pull you to the side here. It's like, it's like, man, like every other word, it's like we're talking crazy. Like you, like what's, why is it mother this and, you know, mother goose that? <laughs> Those conversations maybe don't come to you. They should. If the alarms are working, if we love our friends, oh, don't judge me. I'm not saying, any, I, I'm just putting this out here. Uh, so let's just talk about a snooze real quick. When I hit snooze, here's what's happening. I'm not adhering, I'm not adhering to the standard that I came under. Isn't that right? When I hit snooze, I said I need to be up by 6 o'clock. I said, by looking at what I need to do that day, because what's a priority in my life is some things that I really want most. I want to spend some time with the Lord. I want to make sure I kiss my kids goodbye. Um, I just want to make sure I have time to gra- gather my thoughts before everything just goes crazy. So I... So I said, this would be the best time because I'm competent. You're competent, right? So you say, uh, 6 o'clock would be the time for me to do what I, what I want to do, what I want most. But I hit the snooze, and I don't adhere to the standard that I set for myself or that I was willing to come under because I wanted something now more than I wanted what I wanted most. And in today's day and age, we're exchanging what we want most with what we want now. So like, kind of like this guy by the name of Esau. You remember Esau? There was something that he wanted now. It was a bowl of beans. 
And he traded his birthright, what he wanted most for it. What he wanted most. This is this passage that we talked out of about staying sharp in, in Hebrews chapter 12. We, we, talked about, we talked about how, um, you know, we read that uh, Hebrews chapter 12 where it talks about um, looking unto Jesus, right? Stripping off all of these things, right? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. We usually don't read beyond that for whatever reason. Maybe because that's all we had time for, or maybe that was the easiest thing to make a message out of on a Sunday morning because we only have this much time to try to tell you everything that the Lord's been talking to us to give to you. So we're trying to, you know, that was a bird feeding the bird. I got chick. I got chicks. I got chick, uh, chickens, baby chicks, in, in, our, in our house right now that we hatched out. So a lot of that. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verses, uh, we'll go to 14 or 15. Uh, see, that, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of business springs up to cause trouble and defile many. See to it that no uh, one is sexual, immoral, or godless, or is godless like Esau. For who for a single meal, I think it's sexual immorality, I got the urge, I want it now, right? He, he, he puts that even in the, I want what I want now, right? With Esau, he puts these things, these now, these things that I want now. I want, I want this now. I really want a relationship with my kids most, but I want this now. I, re- I really want, I really want a, my marriage to last into where we get to sit in our rocking chairs face to the west, but I want this now. So while, while, while I'm getting what I want now, I'm, I'm giving up what I want most. So here I am looking at Esau. He said, don't be like Esau, who, um, he said this, for, uh, or godless like Esau. Godless. What does it mean to have godless? Like, in other words, the authority is less. Godless. Like, no longer is there, am I under even what I set. Even what I value, don't be godless. We need, as a church, we need to stop being godless. We need to re, re we need to look at what lordship is at. We need to schedule a wake up call. So that's what I'm talking about today is just scheduling a wake up call, scheduling a wake up call, and, and re- realizing listen, the phone's ringing, the phone's you know you're gonna have to answer the phone. I, a wake up call doesn't stop ringing. Anybody, you have to pick up the phone. It's automatic. You have to pick up the phone to shut it off. It goes on to say this. Um, he said, for, for you know, um, or Esau, for who for a single meal sold his whole birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted, to in, he wanted what he wanted most, he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. Blessing, you know, that's uh, the blessing. He could find no ground for repentance, though he sought for it or a way back. He could find no, why, time was, it was gone. He traded it. That's a tough, tough thing to hear, isn't it? Aren't you thankful that somebody's sounding the alarm? This is just a good thing for you and me to be, re, just kind of take a look and self-assess and say, not self-assess, huh, look into the mirror. Listen, listen, Lord, what do you say? How, how is this? How is that? And come under authority again. You know, this is just something that's good for us all the time to do this. And this is what's so cool. When I open this daily, I'm opening the mirror. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he's speaking to me about my kids. And he's talking about that job. And he's talking about just one of a hundred thousand things. Gave me insight on what's causing that rash. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, he's that good. Hey, you need to not do, hey, you need to, hey, make an adjustment here. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter is the one that's doing the talking the whole time. The Holy Spirit. Set apart. He spoke. Hmm, I need to listen to that. I need to make the adjustment. And I say that I'm coming under, but am I hitting snooze? Am I hitting snooze? I, here's, a, here's a challenge that the Lord gave me, okay? 
break the snooze habit in your life, personally, just with this. Break this snooze habit. How are you going to break this snooze habit? Well, you're going to have to probably move it from right by your bed. So you have to get up, right? Could you break the snooze habit? If, what could you do if you had nine more minutes today? What could you do? You, what, what, what kind of conversation could you have in nine minutes with your spouse, with your wife, with your grandkids? With, what could you do in those nine minutes? What could you have make ready? What could you do in those not just nine minutes? What could you do with an extra hour and a half a week or a little over an hour a week? What could you do? What could you do with an extra three, two, three hours, depending on how many times you hit snooze? What could we do? What could we do? It'd be interesting to look at, you know, your time usage on these things, right? And it's like, oh, we're only averaging two and a half hours a day. That's great. Times seven. That's the equivalent of a whole day of daylight hours that you're awake. So you could increase your what you can your, you could increase your week by a whole day. Look at this Romans chapter thirteen. I'm going to read this. Um, I have it in the message, uh, Cindy. I'm going to read it there first, and then I'm going to read it out of. The, be ma- uh, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day to day obligations that you lose track of time and doze off because you're tired, oblivious to God. (laughs) The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on salvation, on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and (laughs) indulgence, in sleeping around, and dissipation, <laughs> in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ. Be up and about. Let me read this out of the, this is the Berean Study Bible. It's a lot like the ESV. Um, The title of this little passage, 11 through 14, is The Day is Near. The Day is Near. I wanted to say uh, this, the day is nearer. Okay? Do this and understand the occasion. The hour has come for you to wake up from your sleeping. For our salvation is nearer now than when you first believed. The night is nearly over. The dawn has drawn near. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. I could take a, a moment here and and, and I'm going to take a moment here and just say something along this line of somebody, something that uh, my, my cousin, who's in town for the weekend, uh, said. He said this, if the social media places, let's just say Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, if those were not imaginary social platforms, but instead they were a place, like, you know, like the club, right? Would you let your kids go there? alone I I was looking at some things um, on a on the framing of a house and uh, a pole barn rather and um, so I was like oh that's cool and then the next the next little video popped up and it was uh, filtering in my feed this happened yesterday I was letting I told that told out my, my family about this I thought it was crazy and it talked about Jesus all of a sudden, this guy's like, how do you, how do you go to heaven? Because I'm, I'm righteous, because God made me righteous. And then in the middle of that thing, it stopped, and it said, uh, there was big boobs, chest. And it said, are you tired? You want to see something that's better, or more interesting than this? And I'm like, whew, holy cow, that, what happened there? 
And it's not based on, it's not based on anything other than people paying to put things before you. Okay? And so then I, I was like, no way. That wasn't, that was like, that was weird. So then I went back to my, my video of the pole barn. And uh, then I went down. And it was about righteousness again. And, about, and then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, yep, that was that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's the place. That's the place that we put before us. And so then I was just talking to actually our youth pastor, Austin. And you, you know, that sounds like you're on a soapbox, okay? No, it's, yeah, maybe scripture, observation, application, and prayer, maybe. Yep, I'm on one of those boxes where I'm seeing something that I didn't see, and there's provision for the flesh. And he says, make no provision for the flesh. So I'm like, okay. Um, but, you know, it's crazy. And then I thought, I was talking with Pastor Austin, and I said, I don't, I don't see it, because I, I had deleted Facebook a, a long time ago, and then I put it back on for Marketplace uh, about three months ago, because I'm going to be selling my, my house and, and then also building the shop. So I was ready to, like, get some, you know, good deals on some whatever for a shop. And, um, but then, you know, inev inevitably you have a little bit of the feed, right? So I, you'll find that I don't, haven't liked anybody's stuff in three, three months. Really, I had to be sneaky, right? Um, but what I noticed was, like, I don't even know these people that you're putting before me. But even worse than that, the ones that I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of know that person. I don't see people that I really know, so maybe they're just not on it. I'm like, oh, great, because I'm not really that interested. But what I did notice is one person I know to two people or two ads that I did not. Just... But, you know, what I, I kind of found was, like, I don't even realize that because I just scroll past them. But those words are getting in me, whether I realize it or not. And so, though I'm strong spiritually and feeding on the spirit, like I want, and I'm not going to fall, I, what's happening is I get one good, one thing that I want to two things that I never, and you know, I'm really strong in my right arm though, so I can carry two buckets of paint to one bucket here, no problem, but then they add to that third, and after a little bit of time, it's just going to be just strategic to, to get you to control you to do something that you didn't want to do. You're exchanging, but we're exchanging what we want most for what we want now. And so I just wanted to ask you that. Maybe we should schedule a wake-up call. Maybe we should just ask ourselves and say, and, and say, no, not ask ourselves, ask the Lord. This, this is an exercise right here. Lord, where in my life, where in my life am I trading? Where in my life am I trading like Esau? Because I'm here for a purpose. I, I, I can't afford to waste my minutes. Not only can I not afford to, I don't want to. There's some things I really want, right? There's some things I really want in my family, in my relationship. Maybe there's some uh, ambitions and things that you'd like to go see. Maybe there's something you want to build. Maybe there's some things that the Lord's placed in your heart. But what am I... Lord, again, this is unfamiliar. It's not the maybe the way. Lord, what am I? What am I making a trade for? And just be taking, a, taking, a, taking some time, even asking your kids, what are we trading for today? What are we trading for? And it can even be uh, with movies and things like that where we just decide we're going to just sit down with our kids so that we can all veg together. So like, it's not bad if all of us are doing it together. But yet, that was the only time you had to talk. Or that was the only time you had to address something that you saw and the Holy Spirit made sure you knew about with your children or with this situation or maybe with this young man at school or maybe this, this, this girl or maybe, right? And now you have an opportunity. So buy back, the Bible talks us, tells us, redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Buy back. Let's buy it back. Let's buy it back. There's the only thing at the end of our lives that we wish we had more of is not money. It's time. And so I think it's, it's, it's time to look and maybe schedule a wake-up call 
and sound, sound the alarm. Maybe, maybe again, that challenge, maybe some of you will take me up on that. Maybe some of you never, you never use the snooze. Who here never uses the snooze? That's pretty good. Okay. Who here uses the snooze? Not every day, but someday, yeah, right? So here, maybe, maybe part of the reason we use the snooze is because we're tired. And you might not use the snooze in the morning that way, but how many of you procrastinate? Okay. A lot of times we procrastinate because the thing that we're supposed to do is hard. And we're tired. And we had so much today. And I'm going to close with this scripture, John chapter 4, 34 through 38. Jesus said to them, my food, my meat, my strength, what satisfies me, what sustains me, what brings fulfillment, my food. Isn't that amazing how food can do that? It can make you go, oh, comfort food, right? But yet it can keep, it can energize you. It, it sustains you. It, it's amazing what, what, what food does. He says, my food, what energizes me, what sustains me, what fulfills me, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. What is there that needs to be finished that you started? What is there to be picked up that we let down? They're just questions. What are, where am I, why am I tired? Where can I find strength? I'll tell you where you can find strength. Same place Jesus found strength. He goes on to say in verse 35, don't you say, you have the saying that, ah, you got time. Four months to harvest. Ah, oh, you got time. Hey, you got time. Like, there's the planting and the harvest season. But don't you have this saying, there's four months until harvest, which means now's the time for you to do what you want to do, when you want to do it. Hey, YOLO, right? He says, there's the saying, do you say that there's still four months and then harvest comes or comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They're ready right now. There's things right now that we're to attend to now. Um, <laughs> and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. And both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying, is, for in the, for in this the saying is true: one sows and another reaps. And I sent you to reap, for which you have not labored. And others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. It's interesting how I have a father. And he has a father, and he had a father. And so I'm here in this time to, to reap and to sow. To sow, not just to, not just to meander around. God has a call on your life. I can look at every person here and I can tell you this. God has a call on your life. The call of God is on your life. To carry the gospel. To reap, to make an appeal. Let's not get so busy. Let's not get so distracted that we run out of time to attend the things that we want most. Amen? Let's stand today. This brings me to... Um, our offerings, not offering scripture, rather our memory scripture for the week. Every message we've taught has been accompanied with a, a verse that put in our hearts, right? Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, and this is the verse uh, to this week that we're going to put in our hearts and we're going to hide it. It is, um, if you'll put it up there, it says that he it is God who's given me both the will and the ability, to, the desire to do according to his good pleasure. Do you have this in, oh sweet, you have this in the Amplified. He said, not in your own strength. Look what I'm talking to you, what we're talking about today. Not in your own strength. Sometimes it can be intimidating. Sometimes it can be like, God, heavy, I tried, I tried, I've tried. How many of you have tried, right? You like, and it's not because of your intentions. It's just like it seems like we fall short on things. 
but we need to make a demand on something, a different power. Instead of just our willpower, we need God power, right? This is Ephesians chapter 3. This is not, this is Philippians 2. But in Ephesians chapter 3, or Ephesians chapter 1, you see that I pray that Paul has this prayer for the church at Ephesus about that their eyes would be enlightened, that they would understand, right? So in Ephesians 1, there's this prayer about understanding, but in Ephesians chapter 3, there's this prayer about power or ability, and that you would have that power, that you would know the power, that you would experience and know for yourself the power to, to walk out and, and walk the, the, the plan of God out in your life. I, I, I encourage you reading Ephesians chapter 3, 16 to the end of the chapter. Oh, it's a prayer. Lord, thank you for the power. Thank you for the, the, the strength, the ability. But this is the verse, Philippians 2, 13. I'll read in the Amplified, and then we'll, we're going to memorize it, I think, in NKJV. Not in your own strength, for it is God. Somebody say, it is God. God. Who is all the while. You can read it with me. He was all the while, effectually at work in you. You could say it like this. It is God all the while who's at work in me. God is working in me. God's working in me today. God's working in me to do. Energizing. He's giving me energy. I just have been so tired. Well, let the weak say I am tired. Let the poor say I wish I had some more. Wait, that is scripture? Let the weak say I need more energy. I just need to veg out a minute longer. You don't like that, do you, Layman? He gives me a hard time about just riding it and riding it and riding it. Sometimes I feel like that. I need to hear things again and again and again and again. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, maybe, thank you, Father, I'm rich. You're making me more than enough. Energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. It is God all the while working in me energizing me, giving me strength and power and desire to will and to do everything that he desires. That's why I'm here. Put it up there if you have that, uh, Cindy, in the New King James. For it is God all the while who's at work in me, giving me both the will and the desire to work according to his good pleasure. You'll see it. Anyway, that's the verse. These verses are not just to say, oh, yay for me, I know another verse, I'm righteous. No, this is so I can see. Lamp, light, strength. This right here, the grace, the gift, the power to do what you want most. The power to do what you want most. For it is God who works in you. For it is God who's working in me. Both to will and to do. According to his good pleasure. Finishing matters. Finishing matters. Father, we just lift our hands to you. And we just say thank you today for you working in us. Work in us, Lord. Work in us today. We say, you're working in me. Tell them, you're working in me. You're giving me the desire to will and to do your pleasure, your will. Father, today, have your way. Have your way. Show me what I want most. Show me what I want most. Fill me with the power to choose and to finish. We give you glory today for your kindness and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys today. Hey, if you're here this morning and you need prayer or you want to rededicate your life or give your life to Jesus, you came here and you said, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I'd like to meet you up here afterwards. Other than that, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. God bless you. Don't forget the hearts on the counter. 
uh, for the for the prison. Thank you.